Hi, everybody. I wanted to take a minute to talk about the book of James. Um, I know for Galatians, I did intro and chapter by chapter. This particular book, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to look into some things that aren't commonly considered, perhaps, uh, when we talk about the book of James. Uh, so the intro I'm offering here is there are certain books of the Bible that you need more information to have a complete divine thought. Um, the ones that come to mind like Job, Ezekiel, uh, perhaps Daniel, uh, Revelation. Uh, if you only had those books, the picture that you would get of God would possibly be incomplete or even uh, scary. So uh, it's always good to read James uh, through the lens of Paul and through the lens of the Pauline Revelation. I'm just going to go over some things real quick here. Um, Anytime you hear, you read uh, the Bible, whatever book it is, and you experience fear, uh, doubt, uh, you're overwhelmed, or you're concerned, uh, first of all, if that's a continuing thing with a particular passage or book, it's perfectly fine to put that on the shelf, so to speak, and let the Holy Spirit minister to you about it later at another time, and go back to what you know. Uh, I'll return to that here in a minute. But uh, anytime you have that experience of fear, you're experiencing Satan's commentary. So some fear has to be worked out of your heart and mind. Uh, remember 1 John 4.18 says, Perfected love casts out fear because fear has torment. And he that fears is not made perfect in love. So you just got to be refreshed in the revelation of God's love for you, for he is love. Uh, like I said just a few minutes ago, focus on what you know to be true. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith, and we are saved by grace through faith. And nothing from the Holy Spirit is going to disagree with Paul's gospel. In fact, in Romans 2.16, he said, I will judge the, excuse me, God will judge the world based on my interpretation of the gospel. That's a pretty bold statement to make, but two-thirds of the New Testament and most of what happened in the first century in the building of the church involved Paul in some way. Um, remember, we are justified uh, by faith and not by works. That seems to be a question when you look at Paul versus, versus James. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go over some verses here. Romans 4, 2. He said uh, if he was justified by works, Abraham, if Abraham was justified by works, he'd have something to brag about, but not before God. Paul makes that caveat there, not before God. He wouldn't be able to brag before God. Keep that in mind. Galatians 15, 5 and 6. Uh, yeah, go, go back and read that when you have time. But he says um, Abraham or Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Uh, in Gal uh, Genesis 22, 5. Uh, he told his servants, uh, stay here, me and the lad are going to go uh, worship God, and then we will come back to you. And Hebrews chapter 11 brings out that that's a faith move on his part, expecting even uh, Isaac to be raised from the dead. Uh, in verse 8 of 22, uh, he told Isaac, when he said, Look, I see the wood uh, for the sacrifice, but where is the sacrifice? And he told Isaac, God will provide the lamb. And then in James 2, 21 through 23, James is making the case that uh, Abraham's works made him righteous. Um, uh, in this part of my life, my journey, I still see this in the traditional view that uh, this is a reference to uh, Abraham's faith being made visible um, so that the people around him, particularly his servants in this instance, can see that he believed God. Uh, he believed God in Genesis 15, but in Genesis 22, that, that belief was made visible. Uh, James likes to use the word ergon for work. Uh, I would offer you that faith is only visible when we are exhibiting work, but it's faith that does the work. It's faith that actually ergons and does the work. John 14, 12, he that believes in me the works, the ergon that I do, he will do also. Um, when uh, people ask Jesus, what must I do to work the works of God? He said, this is the work that God asks of you, that you believe on the one he, whom he has sent. So believing produces work. Not your effort producing work. Believing, your faith produces works. Faith generates works not effort faith if there's effort in them involved in this at all it's all on the divine side 
It's all on the faith side. The faith of Jesus Christ inside you is producing and doing the work, and you're agreeing to be a conduit of it. And again, like I was talking about earlier, that's something that you don't see in James, but you do fill it out in Paul and some of the Gospels to get that complete picture. And James is a very external book, so he's emphasizing. And what was going on at the time, if you look at Acts 15, um, there, there's a lot of emphasis on externals. And so he's saying, look, if you're genuinely in this move, there's going to be evidence to it because a faith that doesn't produce is not uh, kosher, for lack of a better term. Uh, and then the last thing I would say, the last couple of things I'd say, James agrees with Paul. Uh, check out Francois Dutoy in the Mirror uh, translation. Uh, it's available in the App Store. What a wonderful collection of um, translated and paraphrased uh, New Testament that he's working on there. Uh, he's finished James, and it's a really good read. I highly recommend it. You'll see there where James and Paul are in agreement. And then the last point I want to make, uh, there's he makes a reference to the royal law and the, the perfect law of liberty. Uh, keep this one in mind. The royal law uh, is what God gave to Moses. Uh, the highest interpretation of that law is God speaking to Jesus. So the royal law was for Jesus, and Jesus fulfilled that law. And now we have the perfect law of liberty where we look into the mirror of the word and we see Jesus reflecting back at us, i.e. when you look in a mirror, it doesn't reflect somebody else, it reflects you. We are made in his image, complete in him, and we function out of that perfect law of liberty, all goes well with us. All right, we'll see you next time.